Hello, grade 12. Welcome to your first writing lecture of the year. It's going to be parts of an essay, and I'm going to introduce again, of course, the expository essay. Now, an overview of an essay. Of course, we all know by now that the essay is made up of three parts. Introduction part, body paragraphs, generally in grade 10 through grade 12, we have three body paragraphs, one, two, and three, and we have the conclusion paragraphs. So for this year also, we will have five paragraph essays. Okay, the introduction comprises of general statements and information about the topic, and of course, the thesis statement. In the introduction, you need at least three sentences. Of course, I'm going to talk about the, the details of what should be included in introduction in the coming slides. Body paragraphs, what you do in each of the body paragraphs is support what you stated in your thesis. Okay, and of course, each body paragraph begins with a topic sentence, which I'm going to discuss. The conclusion is generally a brief summary of the main points of the essay. <clears throat> Let's go to the details now. Parts of an essay. An essay, by definition, is a group of well-organized paragraphs discussing one central idea, which is put in the thesis statement. Parts of an essay, as we said, the introduction, it is the first paragraph of the essay you always begin with a hook. It's a first sentence and it should, it's called a hook, of course, it should attract the reader's attention. Therefore, it should be catchy. It could be a question, a sound effect, a figure of speech, a shocking statement, a quote, or visualizing, anything that would attract the reader to your essay. Let's take an example here. Did you know that one and a half acres of forest are cut down every second? I started with a question hook, and it's also a shocking statement. Did you know that 20% of the world's oxygen is produced in the Amazon forest? Boom. This is another example. Boom. The world suddenly shook, and we had no idea what was going on as we stared at each other in complete shock. Those are three different types of hooks that you can use. But please, whenever you decide to use a fact or a statistic, if you are not 100% sure of it, don't ever use it. It will discredit your whole essay and you will lose credibility. <laughs> A statement like this would arouse the reader's attention and make them want to read more. Now, another, the second part of your introduction, we're still in the introduction now, after the hook, is the background information, general information about your topic, not the specifics. The following sentences are general knowledge about the topic and are written to give background information to the reader. Finally, the thesis statement, which should be, as far as you're concerned, as writers, as essay writers, it should be the last sentence. Okay? Maybe in some articles, it won't be the, the last sentence. In some articles, it's implicit. It's not even stated. But as a 12th grader going for the official exams, and even if you're uh, in the foreign system making a 12th grade essay, you should include your thesis statement in the last sentence of your introduction. The thesis statement, this is generally the last sentence of the introduction that holds the main idea of the essay. Let's say the essay was about the effects of garbage pollution on a certain ecosystem. Example, garbage pollution, it needs a topic and a controlling idea. The topic is garbage pollution. Garbage pollution is a very dangerous phenomenon. Now, this is my topic. Now, so what's the controlling idea that I'm going to support in the body paragraphs? Garbage pollution is a very dangerous phenomenon that leads to destructive effects such as water body contamination, infectious diseases, and spoilage of beautiful scenery. 
my topic and my controlling idea, I'm going to support three ideas, one in each body paragraph. This is it. an excellent type of thesis. Okay, the main idea here will be supported in the three body paragraphs, as I said, one for each dangerous effect. You should organize your essay as such. Now the body paragraphs. They are the paragraphs following the introduction. Each essay con can contain as many paragraphs as necessary, but in the secondary level, our essays are usually made up of three body paragraphs plus the introduction and the conclusion, as we said, a total of five. The job of the body paragraph is to give supporting evidence. You wrote your thesis, support it. Okay, you wrote your claim, support it. Each body paragraph needs a topic sentence. Please begin with a topic sentence. And this topic sentence is the main idea of the whole paragraph, the whole body paragraph. Garbage pollution leads to the contamination of water bodies with toxins or poisons or poisonous material. So the whole paragraph will discuss the effect of garbage pollution on water bodies. Now, supporting details, when you, uh, when you write your topic sentence and you, you write your major supporting detail, give me, okay, support it and give me then examples. Examples could be statistics, expert opinions, and if, if statistics are not at hand, let's say you're taking an official exam, you don't have the statistics, it's okay. Take something from your daily experiences, okay? You can say, we see the amount of garbage pollution on the beaches of Sidon every time we pass by there, the, the huge number of plastic bags and plastic bottles, etc. This is credible. Why? Because everybody knows that, uh, that this exists on the beaches of Sidon. So you can use that supporting detail or the, that uh, minor supporting detail. You have topic sentence, major supporting detail, and the minor supporting detail, which is your example to illustrate your ideas. Finally, the concluding sentence, of course, wrapping up. Moving on, the conclusion. This is the final paragraph of an essay and is typically made of one paragraph. A good conclusion needs to restate the thesis in different words, of course, summarize the text in one sentence, and then leave the reader with a final thought, a call for action. Generally, in, in essays related to pollution, we leave the reader with a call for action. You should, or awareness should be raised. Governments should, NGOs must, okay? A call for action. Please don't say I advise you. Please, that is so cliche and uh, it, it really has become weak, okay? Raise awareness, we should. We are part of this problem or part of this phenomenon. Let's all work hand in hand with NGOs and governments, etc. okay? Let it be a powerful conclusion. Always end on a powerful note, okay? A good conclusion should be powerful in order to make an impact on the reader. And of course, in your case, the reader is going to be uh, either me or the guy who is, or, or the, um, the lady who is correcting your official exam. So please have a good impact. Now, five types of writing. We talked about the essay in general, the parts of every essay in the world. Now, there are five uh, main types of writing. The expository essay, which will take a lot of in grade 12 life sciences. Remember, this is this is different from what you would take if you were in the arts. It would uh, you, we would take more narrative writing. Generally, more expository problem solution essay, like the problem of global warming and what can be done. Practical solutions, comparison contrast essay, comparing and contrasting two phenomena, cause effect essay, causes and effects of uh, garbage pollution. For example, definition essay, let's say uh, you talk about uh, COVID, the whole essay you will be defining it and talking about it. Okay, process essay. Uh, for example, writing an essay about uh, the process of photosynthesis. Just, this is an example of an essay. A certain process, a certain 
operation that goes on, you describe it from A to Z in a five paragraph essay. Exemplification essay, you, you talk about a certain phenomena and give examples, or we can also call it a, an illustration essay, okay? Now, majorly expository essays, then another major type of essay you'll be taking, argumentative writing. We took this last year. The aim of the writer is to stand with or against a certain issue here. In this writing, the thesis statement is the author's position or claim. I need to know in the thesis statement, it's called your claim, where you stand on the issue of plastic surgery. Are you with or are you against? Yet the author needs to present both points of view in one of uh, in the body paragraphs. And we're going to talk about them in detail when we when we go to the part where we have to write argumentative essays. We took this before, but we're going to take it again. Okay. Now, in a persuades in an argumentative essay, you have to put to your point of view. Remember your claim in the introduction. Two body paragraphs where you're supporting. The cause is why you are with or against this issue or this uh, topic. And then in the third body paragraph, remember we used to call it, we called it refutation paragraph. You present the weakest point of view of your opponent and then you refute it with a strong point of your own. And then finally your conclusion. Persuasive writing, it's different from uh, argumentative writing in that in all body paragraphs you're just supporting your claim you put your claim in the thesis statement i'm strongly against cosmetic surgery because it's this this and this in the body paragraphs in each of the body paragraphs you're telling me in each one of them why you are against it or with it okay no need for a refutation paragraph you don't need to present the opponent's point of view okay just yours Descriptive writing uh, and narrative writing, they are two types of writing. Descriptive writing, you're describing something, uh, uses a lot of adjectives and figures of speech. We're not going to take that this year. Narrative writing is a story, okay, Bi like a biography, autobiography, historical documents, short stories, novels, etc. This type of writing will use time or chronological order. Now, your concern is with the first three, expository, argumentative and persuasive writing. Okay, the expository essay, we're going to take an overview and we're going to uh, discuss together and read together a cause-effect writing model. The expository essay, as we talked about before, the purpose of this writing is obviously to give information about a certain subject. The writer's tone here is objective, formal, and scientific no feelings here you don't i think that my opinion is no this is not done in expository essays you're just giving objective information and these are the types that we'll be taking this year types of expository writing problem solution cause effect advantages disadvantages and the case study the case study is a type of expository okay where you get get a certain case, let's say we're talking about uh, water pollution, which was, was our first lesson. You will, a, a case study will talk about the case of the beach in Naura. Let's take a positive case, which is cleaner than uh, all of the beaches in Lebanon. You would make a case study about the beach of Naura. If you want a, a, a negative uh, a negative example, you would talk about the case of the Litani River as a highly polluted river only. So this is a specific case. Let's take, let's say we're talking about social media. You would speak uh, about the case of a teenager who was addicted to social media and this led uh, him to addiction and failure at school. This is a case study. And of course, there could be a positive case study in the negative case study where, where you're talking about the negative issue and another case study where you're talking about a, a success story, okay? Now, so the expository essay, this is a, like a summary, introduction. You have the hook, 
hooks the reader and captures his or her attention, contains the topic of the essay, okay, thesis statement, briefly states three or more uh, main ideas which will be explained in the body paragraph. As we said, water pollution um, is caused by uh, sewage, oil spills, and uh, um, sewage, oil spills, and uh, littering, for example, okay? Discuss each one of those in your thesis statement. Discuss each one in a body paragraph. Body is the longest section. We said it's three paragraphs, okay? Three or more fully developed in gray. In our case, it's three paragraphs. Each paragraph contains a topic sentence, please, and two or three supporting details. I wouldn't say five supporting details. Our essays are generally between 250 to 350 words. Now the conclusion, it brings closure to the essay, briefly restates the main ideas without repeating, of course, and ends strongly with a call of action, uh, feelings, uh, uh, final thoughts, etc. Now, here I gave you a cause-effect writing model, which is also present in your ebook. So uh, please go back to it and read it. The destructive effects of air pollution. Of course, from the title, I know that this is going to talk about the effects of air pollution. In today's modern world, it has become normal to open the news and find that the headlines are not political, but environmental. This is a good hook because I started uh, with the fact that now you open the news, even in Lebanon, you might uh, they might start the news instead of news about a politician, they would start the news about an environmental issue like wildfires or a flood that took place in a part of Lebanon or the wildfires that took place in uh, the Amazon in Brazil. So many environmental phenomena have taken their toll on Earth. Air pollution is perhaps one of the most severe and impending issues affecting our planet. It ravages, this is your thesis please, not the other one. It ravages the environment, presents several health risks and affects the economy. Or if you want to consider the whole thing, your thesis statement, it needs to be one sentence, you can put a semicolon here. It means that the sentence is not over. You can do this too, okay? Now, body paragraphs, I'm going to discuss the effects, each effect, okay, on its own. Topic sentence, I wrote it in italic here. Air pollution has negative effects on the environment. Primarily, it leads to the ozone depletion phenomenon. Okay, and here I discuss how that happens. Recent studies have revealed that this phenomenon leads to global warming, climate modification, and the penetration of ultraviolet rays that threatens the human plants, and marine lice, marine anything that is related to the sea. Besides, air pollution causes acid rain that contaminates drinking water and vet vegetation, plants, crops that we eat, erodes buildings, and changes the life cycle of living species. Moreover, air pollution contributes to the infertility of the soil that becomes unsuitable for plants and other organisms in the food web. Thus, air pollution is a real threat for our environment in all its aspects. So here, okay. Two, moreover, air pollution leads to serious health hazards. Of course, here I'm going to talk about the health effects. A recent research shows that more than 65% of people are suffering from diseases caused by air pollution. People have no choice but to breathe the air around them. When it is polluted, they, can, they breathe in ozone, particles and harmful gases that can hurt their lungs, heart and overall health. In addition, air pollution can also cause burning eyes and breathing problems such as asthma and bronchitis. Asthma, you know, when you have an allergy and you start coughing hard and your lungs feel like they're closed, okay, it's an allergic reaction, it's a chronic illness. Bronchitis, where the, the bronchus or the bronchi are inflamed, okay, and you cough a lot. Okay, also ultraviolet radiation causes skin cancer. Besides, researchers found that the emission of lead uh, affects the development of intellectual abilities. Lead, that dangerous and poisonous element. 
and increases the likelihood of heart strokes in adults. Ostensibly, air pollution has exposed the health of human organisms to endless risks. Furthermore, air pollution has terrible effects on the economy. Of course, here we're going to discuss the economy. The health effects caused by air pollution leads to reducing the work attendance and the overall participation in the labor force. Thus, in terms of increased health care costs, of course, the more there is air pollution, the more people will get sick, the more the government has to pay for health care. The more people will miss days of work, reduced work productivity. Air pollution costs a lot of countries billions of dollars annually each year. Annual means yearly. In addition, air pollution has a direct effect on the agricultural sector since it reduces the growth of crops. Crops are plants that we eat, leading to an economic to economic loss. Besides, air pollution damages tourism, of course. Uh, who would uh, want to swim uh, in, in one of the polluted beaches we see in Lebanon? I mean, no, no one in their right mind would do so. For instance, in China, the number of foreign tourists visiting the Chinese capital fell by 15% in the first six months of the year uh, to 1.9 million due to the increase in air pollution. In Beijing, you can hardly go out without wearing a mask. Other than COVID, before COVID ever existed, people had to wear masks in order not to suffocate. Okay, due to the huge amount of air pollution. This leads the Chinese government to lose billions of dollars. Now, consequently, meaning as a result of, immediate procedures should be taken. This is a call for action to reduce the harmful effects of air pollution. First, governments should take measures to limit the emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases, such as using filters in cars and power plants. Second, they can put taxes on carbon emissions and gasoline so that people and companies will have greater incentives to conserve energy, not to waste it, to conserve it and pollute less. Third, governments should apply the program of recycling, reducing and reusing. Reduce, reuse, recycle, you probably took those in science before to encourage people to save the environment. Finally, they can use alternative sources of energy. We talked about those in the previous lesson. If this issue is not properly addressed, okay, talked about or dealt with soon by authorities, people in the government, people in the offices, our planet will be facing impending doom. Impending means coming soon. Doom is destruction, total destruction. So this is it. Okay, uh, this is your prompt. This time uh, I put uh, the, the, the information here as a worksheet, you have to reread it very carefully. And this is your assignment that needs to be posted as homework. OK, uh, we'll talk about this uh, in the Zoom live and uh, on the group. I will send you something based on the above statement. Pollution is one of the major current issues facing the, the whole globe. Other than air pollution, choose one. The one uh, the environmental issue talk about three of its main causes and three of its consequences or effects, suggest at least one plausible solution. Plausible means practical, could be done. Develop your ideas in a well-organized expository essay of 250 to 300 words. Okay, of course, you need to include the following. I told you everything you have to include. So see you soon and take care.